Hi, this is the Enrichment Analysis Screencast from Bioinformatics Academy. This video is part of our Enrichment Analysis Crash Course. Today, I will demonstrate you how to perform a simple overrepresentation analysis using WebGestalt. We will use a list of human genes identified by entry gene IDs as a target list. Let's go to the WebGestalt website. We start the analysis by clicking on the start link. On the first page, we have to say what organism we are interested in here. Of course, we have human genes. Next, we have to say what kind of IDs we use in our gene list. As I have mentioned, we use entry gene IDs. And here we can upload our file. Upload. Here we are at the main settings page. First, let's check if WebGestart recognized our IDs. Yes, we can see that it found annotation for all of these IDs. Good. Let's continue with a brief overview of our dataset. We can do a simple GeoSlim classification by clicking here. See that the results are opening on a new page, so it is easy to go back and do something else with uh, the same original dataset. Here we see that most of these genes are annotated by some gene ontology terms. There are only approximately 70 or so genes without annotation. That is good enough for our purposes, so let's go back to the main settings page and let's make a real gene ontology over representation analysis. Select this analysis type from here. First, we have to provide a reference gene set. Either we can upload a list or we can select from many preset preference lists. Here we will use all the human genes for reference and for that we select this item from the drop down list. Let's continue with the parameters of the analysis. We use the hypergeometric test for overrepresentation analysis, so no surprise here. We have many options to decide which statistics we want to use for correcting multiple hypothesis testing, but we do not have a really good reason to select anything else than the default benjamini hochberg test. In a first-time analysis, we always want to see the best 10 categories, so we have a good overview about the general significance of the enriched terms. Later on, we can set an exact threshold if there are too many strongly significant terms among the results. I like to limit the minimum number of genes in the categories to something higher than the default, so we will skip two small categories. Let's use the threshold of 6 this time. Ok, we set everything, let's run the analysis. Here are the results. We can save the files or view them online. We see here a nice graph of enriched terms. We can see that there are several immunity related terms. Let's see the details of the Im immune response genes. We see that there are 468 genes. Clicking on the term, we can see the detailed statistics. Here are the number of such genes in the entire genome and here are in our set. This is the expected number in a, a random set with the same size as our tar target G list. This is the enrichment ratio. We can see the row and adjusted p-value, which are rather convincing here. If we want to use these results in our publication, we have to mention that out of our original 900 genes, these 468 represent immune processes and this term is enriched by a ratio of 7.69. We have to provide the significance level using the adjusted p-value. Doing that, we can interpret the results from our original experiment using overrepresentation analysis. Thank you for viewing this demonstration. See you for the detailed explanation at Bioinformatics Academy courses.